So hello and welcome to this set of uh, live tutorials for Armour 3. In this set of fairly short episodes I'm just going to go through the basics of setting up an alive uh, mission or alternatively it could be used for an alive campaign if you if you persist state uh, between each of the missions. Now I'm running as you can see down here quite a lot of mods. Um, you don't need to be running these to get alive working all you need is a CBA and uh, alive and you can get all that from the uh, Steam Workshop or alternatively through a platform like uh, Play With Six. So uh, let's get started, let's go to the editor. We're going to use Stratus for this. Now I'm going to assume that you know the basics of the editor, so how to place down units, uh, move the camera around, um, and where things are basically here, the, the, the modules and the, and the markers. Uh, you don't need to be an expert by any means or know how to write code um, with a ARM3 um, but uh, you do need to know the basics. So first you need to sort of say well what, what are we going to do in this campaign? Um, I'm going to keep things very very simple. I'm going to have one force uh, starting the op4 force starting at the airfield and then I'm going to have uh, blue 4 force starting at the uh, Camino firing range and they're essentially just going to uh, attack each other. Um, but the beauty of Alive is that you can set things up in any way you want. Um, so the very first thing we have to do is add a player because you're going to need a player to do to do debugging and actually to to run the mission. So I'm just going to put down any uh, blue four uh, player in here. Um, we can go into the uh, 3D editor and make sure that they are marked as as player there. That's all you need, and then you you could now theoretically just uh, run the mission. Um, but let's get to actually the uh, live parts that so we've got that down. Oh, one more thing I'm going to add, which can be very useful. Your first module is to add in the uh, Game Master module. And this will allow you to activate Zeus uh, with the Y key or whatever you have it bound to once you're in the mission. And in order to, to, to make that work, uh, you need to just set the owner as admin logged. And that will be either the single player uh, in a single player mission or alternatively the admin in a multiplayer. So that's down. So now let's have a look at our uh, Alive modules. Now the Alive modules over here um, in, in this area, you've got these modules to play with. Um, there are a couple that you always need to put down at the very start. So you need Alive required. Uh, Alive data is, is there if you want to persist um, the, the missions so you can uh, play them uh, over many sessions. Um, and you also need to put down the, the virtual AI system which controls the uh, the AI that you're you're fighting against when they spawn, moving around that kind of thing. So there aren't usually anything that you need to change in here, but it's worth just taking a look at all these things. Uh, they come with very sensible defaults. Uh, live data we we won't touch for now. And then the, we come to the alive uh, AI system. Um, and an important thing to note, and the reason that alive can do all these things is because. Unlike a traditional mission where you're putting all your units down at the, uh, when you create the mission, in Alive you're essentially putting down groups of units or, 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 um, or sets of, of units and then the commander of them will move them around the map without actually spawning them in. It's only when you get close to them that they actually spawn in to the map. And as you can see here, this is the spawn radius. So anything outside 1500 meters from the player or players uh, will be what's called virtualized, so it won't be actually spawned in. It will be controlled in the background by by Alive. Um, but all of the rest of these are, are very sensible defaults. So um, setting up the basic forces is super easy. The first thing we need to do is set a zone where they start in. So we go over to markers, to create a rectangle, and then we'll go over to the blue four one as well and create a rectangle like that. And then you need to give it a name. So here let's just let's call it op4 and then for this one let's call it blue4 next thing you need to do is put down a military ai commander for each of your forces and that's the unit that controls not the unit but the, the entity that controls all of the units for that particular side and we can set some options for this one. So controller type is going to be invasion. You've got different types. Uh, invasion will, will usually go and attack somewhere else. Occupation will hold a zone. And asymmetric is something special that I may do a, um, a video on later. And we want this faction to be the 
For the purpose of this, let's just say CSAT. We'll do the same over here with this military commander. They're going to be NATO. Great. So the next step, once you've done that, is to place your placements, your military placements. And there are really two important ones, the civilian objective and the military objective. Now, what these will do is when you specify a marker for them, uh, what's called a, a, a TAOR marker, or Tactical Area of Responsibility, they will spawn a given number, well not spawn, but have a given number of troops within that area. So this here um, is a military base, so we're going to use the military uh, placement objective like this. If we were starting here, for example, we'd use the civilian um, objective. But for now, we're just going to use the military one. And we're going to assign it to the rectangle that we just placed. So we'll call that OP4. There we go. And we give it a force size. So how many do we, do we want the AI commander to have? For the moment, let's just say 100. And then here is the, the, the faction of uh, units that are going to be spawned. And we're using OP4, so uh, that's, that's appropriate. And as you can see, there are cool little other things here which you can really look at yourself and customize. Do you want supplies to be placed, random supplies? Let's put some low ambient vehicles in there as well. Hit OK. Now, in order for these things to know about each other, we need to sync the military placement objective over to the AI commander. That's great. Now, we'll quickly go and do the same over here. This is a military base, so we will add the military objective. We will say that this one is the uh, blue four marker, and the force faction here uh, is going to be blue underscore F. And then we will sync these two Ah, there we go. And we'll sync this military objective to the commander. That's great. So those are set up. If we were to now go into the game, they would spawn. They wouldn't do anything, but they would all spawn and they would stay in this area. They would do clever things like patrolling and occupying buildings and things like that. But we want them to fight. And to do that is so simple. All you have to do is sync this military commander to another placement like this. There you go. So that military commander's objective will be to go and attack this particular area. This military commander's objective, on the other hand, is going to be to go and attack this area. So that is exactly what we want. We have two military commanders and they're going to attack each other and they're probably going to meet and fight it off in the middle here. So let's play it. Play in single player. There we go. So we're spawned in. And if we now go to Zeus, which we have because we put down that module, we'll see that lots of blue four units are being spawned uh, in the area that we, we defined. And, oh, and you can already see that these units are being ordered to go and attack the base over here because that's what we told the commander to do. And if we move the camera over to this base, we'll see all the OP4 units start to spawn in. And as you can see, some of them are simply in buildings, guarding, while other ones are um, probably going to start attacking and going out to their objective, which is over here. Yes, we can see one vehicle here, which is on its way out. Great. So that is the absolute basics of how to create two different factions, put down military placement modules, and then to give orders to the military commanders to uh, uh, tell them what they're going to do in terms of um, your mission. Uh, in the next mission, we're going to talk about um, some of the more uh, advanced modules and how to use those effectively in an alive mission or campaign. Thanks for stopping by.